Hey gang, welcome to another episode of This and That TV exclusively on Oceanic Time Warner Cable's Channel 12. It's OC16. That's so confusing. Like we're OC16, but we're on Channel 12. Yeah. Well, we used to be on Channel 16, but UH Sports went to that. So we took Channel 12 that comes with the basic cable package. So 40,000 oh, more people see awesome. us. that's awesome. Woohoo, basic cable. <laughs> All right, on this episode, I'm headed out to Creative Sound. We have In the Kitchen with Miley. But first, we're gonna check out Asset School, who's doing amazing things for children with dyslexia as well as gifted and talented. Here is Assets. Yo, check this out. Woo! Assets is a very unique school here in Hawaii. We serve a population of kids that are different from all others because they are not cookie cutter kids. Our kids at Assets are highly gifted individuals, um, very creative individuals, and all of them come here with very unique, interesting, creative personalities. The typical student that comes into our school will show characteristics of apathy, despair, sometimes anger, we often refer to the kids as wounded before they come here and certainly discouraged. The students that are dyslexic um, are provided with a strong multi-sensory program, um, which actually is good for all students. It's, it's a structured program in a small classroom with a very, very small student to teacher ratio. On average, our students in the uh, elementary and middle school, the ratio is no more than approximately one to eight. Um, in the high school, the largest classroom in the high school it will have 10 students in it. On average, around seven or eight. So if you can imagine from the perspective of a teacher, and the average teacher in the United States works with 35, 40 students per period. We have teachers that are working with 35 and 40 students per day. The reason we brought Cole to Asset School is because he was having difficulty with writing. The struggle came out in the beginning of third grade, and it's been a battle in third grade. Uh, reading responses were difficult, and getting his thoughts from his head to his paper was hard, frustrating. He would come home and not want to do his homework, incomplete classwork, and then get penalized for not doing work, which is detention, and he didn't want to go to school anymore. He asked me to homeschool him. And so we came to Assets, and, and here we are. It's very, very exciting to watch a student come into the school as a fourth grader or fifth grader, um, not believing in themselves, not believing that college is in their future, not believing that they have a future, and see them as seniors um, after having been accepted to three or four colleges with optimism, a futuristic uh, orientation for themselves. It's just incredible. It's very, very touching to watch. I'm here at Assets because when I first had the opportunity to visit Assets, I looked around and I saw 340 kids that reminded me of myself. Um, I, as a young man, struggled in school. Um, I talked late, I walked late, I started to read late. As a result of some of the early wounds that I acquired in school, um, I became kind of a class clown. Later on, I became angry, became rebellious, got into a lot of trouble. I struggled all the way through school, but I had the privilege of having parents of means who were able to afford to provide me with all types of intervention, tutors, psychologists, speech and language therapists, whatever it took. So I was one of the fortunate ones that um, had access to resources that many, many kids just don't have. But I, I squeaked through high school, graduated with a 1.9 grade point average, which is just below, it's a D plus average, basically. And six years later, I was teaching at California State University, Northridge. Um, when I learned about assets, I was intrigued. I, I had known very little of asset school. I had some knowledge of the school through their former head, Lou Salso. So when I heard about the uh, position here at assets and decided to look into it, um, the more I learned, the more excited I got. And again, when I had the opportunity, when the, the school's board was kind enough to bring me out for an interview and allow me to just hang out at the school, I, I was right at home. I mean, 
these are my peeps. I mean, this is how I was right at home, and uh, I want to have a chance to impact these kids' lives just as mine was impacted. At Assets, now he, he likes to go to school. He gets us up in the morning, and he's, hurry up, let's go to school. So he's, he's happy about coming to Assets. He is uh, more independent, meaning when he comes home from school, he dives into his backpack, takes out his homework, and does it without help, without direction. Um, he completes it on his own, independently, puts it away, he charges his school iPad, all on his own, without a problem. You know, there's no bargaining or arguing. There's just, he's happy to do it, and it's, it's a relief for all of us. First of all, what I'd like to say to any parent who's concerned about their child is not to give up on their child. Um, parents need to be advocates for their kids, just as teachers need to be advocates for their students. But if they're interested in assets, they should call the school. The number is area code 808-423-1356. They should ask to speak with Sandy Tadaki, who is our Director of Admissions. She's an incredible educator, an amazingly insightful individual, and she can talk them through the process. It's so amazing all the great things that Assets is doing with their students. And Paul, the head of school, to hear his story and the challenges he went through, and now he's there to help the, his students. That's just amazing. Yeah. People, if you have a child that is gifted and talented or is challenged with dyslexia, please give Assets a call. Right now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm headed out to Creative Sound. And we have In the Kitchen with Miley. Stick around. <laughs>